Welcome back to Papa Z's Bees. Today we're going to continue our mite checks on our hives. With, we're going to go with the horizontal hive here. It's a little different hive, of course, because you don't have boxes stacked up. The frames are all horizontally located. Uh, so we got several things we're going to do here. One, I've got the normal smoker that you see. Uh, but these bees have been a little, a little feisty at times. So I'm, what I'm also have out here is some one-to-one -one sugar water that I'll also I might try to spray and see if that calms them down. We have the Varroa test bottle to do to, to our Varroa. If you watch the, the way we've done it the last couple of times, you, you'll know. This is the bucket we shake in. This is, in case I need to, to capture the queen, this is just a standard queen clip that we'll, that we'll use uh, to, to capture her and, and segregate her. Another option, just depends on what we find, is this uh, isolation tray here. This basically, you can fit a whole frame in. If the queen is on there, she can't get out. So that's, that's another option. And this green, of course, this green frame here, if you've watched this hive before, uh, this, is, uh, this has been in the freezer. Of course, they, they, they will have died. But the reason we do this, this is part of integrated pest management. Uh, the drones take longer to emerge than, uh, than any of the other bees, the queen and, and the worker bees. So what we do with integrated pest management is we take this frame, which has, it's green, it has larger cell cavity, or cell imprints, uh, where, the, where when the bees build, build this out, they'll build it out as, as drone frame. And then the queen will lay only drone eggs in here. Now, the reason it's important that for this longer period of time, the mites somehow sense that. They're very smart as well. They have, uh, they're, they're pheromone or smell oriented as well. So they'll find a, a drone frame, a, a drone cell with a, with a larvae in it. And what they'll do is they'll climb down in there because get, that gives them longer to reproduce within that drone cell since it lasts several days longer than, than the worker bees, which are the, they're the next longest. So that's what, that's what we do is we do this, we kill the drones, and the drones are not as extremely important to, to the hive, but more importantly, we had this, all of these uh, capped brood here should be filled with, with a lot of dead mites. So what we'll do is we'll put this back in the hive, the bees will clean this all up, and then the, the queen may or may not lay drones in here. The drones, they don't, uh, towards the inner part, latter part of the year when there's really no mating going on, uh, they don't produce a lot of drones because they, since they don't provide anything to the hive, uh, all they basically are is freeloaders inside the hive. So anyway, we'll get started. Again, we'll do is we'll we'll uh, do a little smoke to them, let them know that we're that we're coming in. This is a rapid round feeder that we use. They propolized it down, so I just usually just leave it on there. Now, if, again, if you'll remember, the last time we were in this hive, it was pretty uh, uh, pretty nasty. So I'm hoping. I mean, there's a possibility rather than just being a, a group of nasty bees that uh, the possibility could be that they were queenless. And that being the case, uh, they would be not very happy. One thing before, we had a black microphone too, and they just attacked that microphone. We'll see with the white microphone if they, if they do the same. Lots of bees. Um, see some drones in there. This is that frame that uh, is just full of honey and they will continue to keep that loaded until they actually need it. Well, they're a little feisty. This might be a time when I try the, the sugar water spray on them to see if that calms them down any better. That gives them the opportunity to, to uh, actually clean each other off and lick off the, the sugar water. And sometimes can cause them to make them to be a little bit uh, less uh, unfriendly. Okay, so we've got some brood here. So what we'll do is this, we'll use this one to shake. Got to check for the queen. This queen has sometimes been over on uh, this frame. Let's 
just don't see so we're gonna we'll shake these bees off into here and again as we said those that fly away are foragers so it's not that critical now that we got them off of there you can see the the, the decent brood pattern this is such a big hive that there's no way that she needs to do them all up yeah lots of brood on this one every once in a while you'll mistake a a drone which is what you're seeing uh, in here with the bigger head and so on uh, I lost him I don't know where he went but yeah there's one right there see how much bigger he is a lot of time people will mistake those for a queen and they're not they're just a, a drone they're a male bee uh, they're very loud because they have big fast wings because uh, they have to be able to try to catch the queens at, at, during the mating hive they go to a drone congregation area so you'll see you know this is still early enough in the year that uh, they may be producing quite a bit of drone so okay you can see these uncapped cells here and they look awfully big like they have maybe already pupated so what this could very possibly be is that these bees are, are hygienic in nature in that um, they when they smell a, a mite in a cell they'll uncap it and as soon as they uncap it pretty much the the, the, the mites die so that it's a real possibility of what what we're seeing here so we go ahead and and, and get the bees I want to check make sure I don't have the queen and my wife was asking yesterday how do you know well you just kind of look for them to congregate they'll They'll come around the queen because they have she has a retinue or a, a bunch of bees that uh, that will nurt it will take to her. She doesn't feed herself. The, the bees feed her, and I just don't see it. So we got more than enough bees here to get a half a cup of bees and to put in there. So we'll go ahead and close this down, and uh, there's still quite a few bees left in there. This will give the opportunity for the, the mites to die, and, the, and of course, unfortunately, the bees die as well. But at least we'll see. You know, we told earlier in the week we found one of our hives that was uh, extremely, uh, had extreme mite numbers. And so uh, we, we started uh, mite treatments, which we have a video on as well as I'll put, I'll put down there as well. So we don't know for yet on this one. I, because I saw that, uh, that place in that last hive, last frame, where uh, the, the bees were actually uncapping them, that leads me to believe there's a possibility that they, they may have good numbers. You just don't know. You really don't know. Lots of good pollen in there, right in here. More drones, if you look real closely, you can see the drones. There's a drone right there. Uh, again, they, they don't do anything for the hive, uh, but they will get out and uh, and mate. This little broodminder thermometer here is, is what we use to tell our temperatures. Uh, bees will typically uh, keep the, the brood area where the, where the brood is like this, they'll keep it between 92 and 96 degrees year-round. Whether it's 20 degrees outside or 120 degrees outside, they have ways to, to keep it clean, to keep it cooler. Okay, that's all I want to see on this end. Now I want to go down on the other end, partially because I want to be able to um, put that drone frame back in there now I, I am pretty pleased with the temperament I mean they're not real happy but they're not all over me like they were the last time so that's to me that's a that's a good sign that that is possibly that that we had a a, a queen that was missing last time Let me give them a little sugar water here that, that that seems to have been calming them down pretty good I'm gonna go ahead and put this this cover back on. And 
guys need to get them to move so I don't squash any more than I have to. Yeah, I think there's a lot less um, uh, angry temperament than there was last time. There's still a lot of them there's flying, but you got to remember there's so many bees in this hive. Uh, I don't know what the, George, my wife asked me the other day what, what the, what, what I, how many bees I thought there were in there. And it's really kind of hard to say, but my, my real guess, guess is there may be 60, 70, 80,000 bees in this hive. It's just so big. So we're going to go down here so you can find that green frame or where the green frame goes. It's basically a place where there was a, a frame that was empty. See, they're just not, not got a bad temperament at all at this point, which is, which is great. This is not the spot. At least I don't think. I'm gonna put this here and pull the next one. I'm gonna get some frames here. These should be just be um, honey frames down here. Oh yeah, look at that honey. There's what there's honey all through here, and then there's a lot of nectar in here. So this is this is on the oh wow, same thing over here. Just a lot of really pretty honey. So and several of the other frames around here are that way as well. So what we'll do here, uh, we'll just box this one back, this side back up because here's the divider board. This keeps the, the queen uh, on, on one side of it so she doesn't get in and lay in areas that she's not supposed to be. Because you don't want her laying where your honey is because when you go to harvest that honey, uh, it makes it difficult. Because you don't want to harvest where there's brood. So I've got to find the frame. Well, that's not it because there's some brood on that. So I'm going to Yeah, this is the new frame. They built this frame out since we put we last put that green frame in. So I'm going to just lay this one out here and pop this green frame back in so they'll clean it up. So what we have to do this board that we put back in, it has to make sure that it covers the top of this next board and that way the queen can't crawl up over the top <clears throat> now we'll put this frame back on or this cover okay i'm gonna what i'll do is i'll leave this open like this so those bees can can basically fly out and uh and get back inside okay so we'll leave that like it is i didn't find that queen but i'm pretty pleased at, at the temperament of these so i'm not going to worry about replacing the queen at this point now they'll probably get down there on that frame pretty good that we pulled out because it had some honey on it and so they'll want to clean that up and take it back in the hive said the temperament is so different right now on these and that's good because I although I was really strongly considering requeening it you could see that the abundance of bees in there the abundance of honey these are really great bees so I really hate to, to get rid of her but if, if she's so nasty that we can't work the hive without getting stung a bunch it's something you just have to do there's a few in here we'll have to count them I have a feeling we're gonna have to do a, 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 a treatment 
and with all our hives we've got the little space here to do the treatments so we can pull that out and and use our oxalic acid vaporizer so i still have some bees flying around me but we'll take this in and we'll give you a count on how many we had and and what our plan is but again i, I from what little i saw in there we're going to have to have to treat these and that's that's okay for this time of year Again, I would prefer we use formic acid, but we'll have to use oxalic acid and for the reasons stated in the, in the video that we did. So thanks for watching. We'll, we'll let you know.